Good day, all. Welcome back to Cruising Classics YouTube channel. Today we have for your viewing pleasure a 1974 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. This is a one family owned, low mileage survivor car. And by low mileage, we're talking only 33,000 actual miles per the title. This car was bought new back in 74 by a gentleman who, when he passed, gave it to his niece. And she kept it for the last couple years, got it in good running condition, and then brought it to us. Really sharp car, not a perfect one, but man, what a nice time capsule. Paint on it is still original, and it is in driver quality now. Uh, it's had some fade over the years, little rock chips. Uh, it's a used car on the outside. It still presents well, uh, but the paint is not a new paint job at this point. Great look on the front end. You've got the double waterfall front grills, bright headlight bezels, and a nice chrome center spine that runs down the hood to really make things pop. You've got the Oldsmobile spear in the center. Down under the front bumper, which does look quite nice, uh, are these little rubber guards. And these are starting to show some wear over time. Those don't clean up any better. At least we couldn't get them any nicer than what they are. Uh, but they're kind of hard to see. You only see them if you're really far away from the front of the car. Overall, a nice presentation. As we move around to the side, you'll see it is a black on black on black. Triple black car with a lot of chrome elements to brighten it up. Uh, and some white elements. You've got a real nice pinstripe that starts at the front, runs along that upper body, body line back to near the edge of the door. And there's another pinstripe that runs from the rear of the car, comes up and follows the Landau top over. It does have a chrome and black body side molding, as you'll see here, that runs down the center of the body all the way from tip to tail. We've also got wheel lip molding, a really nice Cutlass Supreme badge with faux chrome vent underneath of it. This is on both fenders. They share the same emblem. Body color side mirrors on both sides, bright trim at the top of the hood and around the windows, as well as drip rail molding. You see here we've got a nice Landau top in very good condition. The opera windows, uh, around them is starting to pucker with a little bit of age, but they still look good. You'll see, there's a nice little Oldsmobile spear badge again. You've got that nice contoured look on the rear window. And again, look at how nice this vinyl Landau top still looks over time. It's in excellent condition. You'll also notice we've got door edge molding body colored insets on the door handles and some rocker molding down underneath lots to attract the eye on this car for sure and going along with that are these nice factory black and chrome wheels that it sits on with oldsmobile center caps and some supercharger tires from kelly these are bias ply tires as you can see here Nice long straight body. Now back on the back, the trunk shows a little bit of wear. Uh, in particular, you'll see the paint could look a little nicer up on that rear valance area. But from a couple feet away, it's all just jet black and looks great. Love the rear end styling here. You can see the downward sloping edge and the really high tail lights that flank on either side vertically another nice chrome bumper with a black rubber edge guard on it and like a lot of cars of the era it does have a hidden gas cap more cutlass supreme badging back here in the back in 74 cutlass was by far the most popular car line going on for uh for Oldsmobile, it made up about 40 some percent of their sales. Inside the trunk, we've got some rubber floor mats. Uh, these are rears and fronts. Uh, as you'll see, those have GM logos on them. 
We have a full-size spare with a factory wheel and center cap. And you'll see a factory jack down underneath. And we have the nice vinyl wheel cover here. I'll just kind of sit that on top of it for now. There is also a car cover back here in the back. Uh, a carpet or kind of felt liner has been laid down here. It's stuck to the bottom. It does peel off. You just kind of have to pull on it a little bit. But that is the trunk. Oh, and we still have the old jacking instructions on the deck lid. Very cool. You'll notice on it down here, there's a little bit of pitting on the uh, faux chrome piece that lines the bottom of the back plate. As we move around to the passenger side of the car, you'll see it looks just like the other side. Long, straight, couple of paint mars here and there. In particular on this car, there's a little mar right there and there. Don't know what caused those. Looks to me like something likely happened in a garage. Something probably fell into it. Looks just stunning in that triple black setup. Of all the color combos, I think this is the one I would have selected that year for sure. Now that we're back up to the front of the car, I'm gonna pause briefly. I'll reach inside the car and unlatch the hood and we'll be back to show you what's inside the engine bay. And we are back with the hood now open on the 74 Cutlass Supreme. You'll see the hood mat is still in good shape. And the engine bay is very, very stock. The sticker on the air cleaner says it all. It's an Oldsmobile Rocket 350. It is a V8, 350 cubic inch, and everything under this hood says to me this is an original, untampered with car. You can see a couple new parts here and there that have been changed over the years, but overall it looks like, like a factory setup here under the hood. Uh, you'll see that there is an air conditioning unit and it does have a belt running to it. The compressor is not locked up. It does not blow cold at the moment, but we believe that with a charge it likely would, though we cannot say for sure. Some other amenities you'll find underneath the hood. It does have power brakes. There's the booster, there's the dual reservoir. It is disc front and drum rear on the brakes. And down in here, you'll see there's the cap for the power steering fluid fill. So it does have working power steering as well. That 350 V8 is mated up to a turbo 350 three-speed automatic transmission made for cruising all right let's move on inside the car there is a lot to talk about in here the inside is very very well preserved i can't wait to show it to you actually right away as we open the door you'll see those courtesy lights come on both under the dash and back on either side by the opera windows these doors are long they've got to be three and a half foot or longer they're very heavy, but there is no sag to them. They close perfectly. The lineup looks great on the car. And the condition of these door cards is phenomenal. Hardly anywhere at all. They're in excellent shape. You can see that nice wood grain insert there. An interior mirror control for the driver. These nice pull handles for pulling it shut. A really, really nice badge here for the Cutlass Supreme. Great looking door cards. And as we move the camera the other way, you'll see that it matches the rest of that interior. These seats are awesome. Look at the really cool backs on them. All the seats have that, both front seats, and these are strato bucket seats. So headliner, and, or I'm sorry, the headrest kind of incorporated into them. They're just very tall. And in the back, whoop, sorry. We've got the same insignias on the back of the seats. Back seat is in awesome shape, just like the front. No signs of wear. Got seat belts for your passengers back there. Again, those lights by the opera windows. Nice clear package tray. And a nice tight black vinyl headliner covering the top. A couple of visors in the front. 
once we enter in, wow, these seats are super comfortable. Oh, these are nice, really nice. I wish I could share it with you in some other way. You gotta come sit in it to, do you, to see it. It's, it's nice, very comfortable. The dash looks completely original to me. You can see there is a little bit of warping around the speaker. And again, this is what makes me think it is the original dash. Uh, no cracks, just a little bit of warping from time. Right there it is again. You can see how it's kind of picking up right there a little bit. Small demerit for an original grill from night or original dash from 1974. You can see the wood grain elements continue onto the dash down here where the wiper switch is and the light switch is. Uh, the wipers do work, they're two speed wipers. The gauge cluster isn't much of a gauge cluster here on this car, unfortunately, as you can see. Uh, we've got a speedometer and odometer. Uh, and Try and get in on the miles there, you can see it. 33,106 on the odometer. And here there is a gas gauge, but other than that, it's just warning lights, uh, not gauges for things like oil pressure, water temperature, etc. It's just how they made it. Moving on over here in another wood grain encircled area are the climate controls. And you can see it was born a factory air car. And again, we think the air could be made to work with a charge. Uh, but if you've got to charge it, it's leaking somewhere, so that would probably need fixed too. A factory AM, FM push button radio, which does work. And looking over to the passenger side of the dash in the glove box, you'll find an owner's manual from back in 1974. Still in real good condition. Again, passenger seat looks great. Center console. Love this center console. It's got a nice little storage box. And a leather ball shifter with a nice little finger poles on it. I love that. Nice and sporty. Got a really nice wood grain inset that surrounds the shifter. And a little cubby space for keeping things. All right. Steering wheel looks original to the car. Uh, you'll see it is a two spoke model, kind of thin on the outside, working horn. And we'll go ahead and start this up. It is an older car. This is a cold start. I'm gonna give it a couple of pumps and fire it up. <laughs> this thing runs great. Like a 30 some thousand mile car should. Has a great sound to it. It's no speed demon, but it will get out of its own way. Let me give you a quick show here. The radio does operate. So, radio works. I'll flip the wipers on for you. Wipers work just as they should too. Lights, see the dash illuminate there. Perfect. Let's hop out and give this car a listen from outside. Classics in Columbus, our number is 614-276-7355. We're happy to help with any questions you might have about the car, questions about financing, questions about transporting the vehicle to your garage once you purchased it. We can help with all of that. Again, we're at Cruising Classics in Columbus, Ohio, 614-276-7355. And we've got this awesome 74 Cutlass Low Mile Survivor car. Give us a call today. We'll be back again to join you tomorrow with something else cool.